Hello everybody and welcome to my desktop. Today's little tutorial video is going to be ever so slightly different because I'm not going to be showing you something in Minecraft or in TechIt. I'm going to be showing you something of... I'm going to be showing you how to mod Minecraft. So, you know how TechIt has all the, all the mods, the IC2, the EE, and the Red Power. You have, they have to be put in somewhere, and now you can do it in one of two ways. You can either have a launcher like TechIt, or you could have the manual install, which goes directly into Minecraft. Now, the reason I'm doing this is an interesting little story. I was watching a video on YouTube. Good Boulder Fist was doing his mail time video, specifically his number 10 video. And he mentioned near the end that they weren't going to do a TechIt server because the mod developers weren't exactly pleased with TechIt. And there was something coming out here soon that he was going to do. But he didn't mention what that something was. But one of the savvy viewers pointed out that what he was talking about must have been the Feed the Beast mod pack. Now, this mod pack actually has the support of the, devel the mod developers, which is something TechIt does not have. Apparently, the mod developers are kind of pissed off at TechIt because TechIt just kind of took their stuff without their consent. Uh, I don't fully understand it. There is actually a thread in the forum detailing a little bit more information about what's going on with all that. But uh, all I know for sure is this is why forestry has been removed from TechIt. It's because the mod developer for forestry didn't want his mod in TechIt and asked them to remove it, but they refused to. So with uh, updates to forestry, they, he added an incompatibility with TechIt. Now, this is not an incompatibility with other mods. It's a specific incompatibility with TechIt. Causes nuclear exploding bees. Which, I'm actually kind of disappointed that I didn't start playing TechIt before forest Forestry was gone. This is why I didn't know about it until a couple of days ago. I kind of want to see the exploding nuclear bees. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed that I missed that. But, anyways, uh, spoke it over with the admin of Shenanaderp, adult, and a few of the uh, Shenanaderp team. And it, it, we've pretty much come to the consensus that once the Feed the Beast mod pack comes out and has been tested, uh, we're going to dump TechIt and switch to FTB. For a couple of reasons. One, it's a moral reason, because... This is actually supported by the mod developers, and we like these mods, and we want to support the mod developers. Two, because it's supported by the mod developers, we will get more updates faster, and the mod developers will probably work to make Feed the Beast more compatible. So you know all those little annoying glitches in TechIt? More than like, well, okay, let me rephrase that. They will probably be there at the very beginning of Feed the Beast, but people will actually work to fix them instead of just going, haha, that's what you get, Tech It. Now, as of right now, there aren't as many mods in Feed the Beast as Tech It, but that's okay. A couple of reasons. One, we get forestry. I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get forestry when I was playing it. We also get Mistcraft, which from what I understand is really, really cool, but takes up a lot of RAM. So this is one of the reasons why I'm going to be testing this stuff. And that is the reason why I'm making these videos. Because I have absolutely no idea how to use GitHub, which is how you would get the beta version of Feed the Beast Launcher. I am going to manually install all of these mods, or at least attempt to. And then I'll be able to test them. 
I will attempt to install them on the client side and then on the server. Because I run my own servers, obviously I can set up a test server fairly easily with these mods. But there is an advantage to having a launcher. One, it's easier. Instead of manually installing this, which requires searching through the internet, figuring out how each mod gets installed, and then installing them one at a time, testing them to see if they com conflict with the previous mod, Ugh. the launcher takes care of that for you. And the second reason is that you can run both at once. You could have Feed the Beast alongside an install of Minecraft. So you can connect to a vanilla server or just play single-player vanilla Minecraft or choose to pick Feed the Beast. You don't have to go, okay, which one do I want to play from now on? So, that brings up the question. If we're going to be manually installing these mods on top of our Minecraft, how do we do that but still get access to vanilla Minecraft? Well, that's what this video is today. It's not actually about installing these mods. It's about preparing Minecraft to install these mods. Set it up that we can point Minecraft somewhere else. So I'll start by a little basics of how Minecraft works. Minecraft, after you download the Minecraft.exe file from Minecraft.net, you run it, and then you see it a progress bar doing its thing. That is downloading all of its files to a folder called App Data. And you can get there by going start and then in the search box or uh, in uh, in like Windows Vista or Windows 7 in the search box or in Windows XP you go to start run or in any version of Windows, you hit the Windows key and the R button, and it will bring up the Run dialog box. You just type in percentage app data percentage and hit OK, and it will bring up this folder. Now, this folder can also be accessed manually, but it's a little bit harder. You have to go to your C drive or your system drive if you are special and installed it somewhere else, go into Users or uh, C Drive My Documents, and you find the user, and then you go to your App Data folder. Now, more than likely, it's going to be hidden, and that's fine. You just go up here, and you type it, add to the end of this, backslash App Data. And then it'll bring you here, and then everything we're looking for is under roaming. This is the app data variable folder. Make sure you grab the right user, because Chrono doesn't have anything under his app data folder because I'm logged in as administrator. And then we go to app data, and, there, and then roaming, and then we see all our stuff. So we can see we have two in here right now. We have a dot .minecraft which is where the Minecraft installer puts stuff. And then we have Technic, La Technic Launcher, which is where Technic puts its stuff. And in Minecraft, you can see the standard stuff, the bin where the Minecraft.jar is, or, and possibly more jars if you keep them like I do. And I have this so I can connect into my server, and then I have this so I can play the 1.4.2 version. But that's where Minecraft puts everything, in that variable, percent, app data, percent. So all we have to do is tell Windows that the app data variable actually points somewhere else. Now, obviously, we don't want to do this permanently because we have all of this other stuff that goes in here. As you can see, I God only knows what I actually have in here, and God only knows what kind of special things I'm revealing to the world doing this. So what we can do, we go to wherever we want to put all this. I do it on my C drive 
just for performance issues. I don't want to throw it on another drive. You could put it on a separate drive entirely. You can put it on an external drive. I wouldn't recommend that because external drives are a little slower and they could cause performance issues. But it can be done. I've seen it done. I've created this folder called Minecraft and Mods to indicate that this is where I'm going to put my mods. Now, in here, I've already copied the Minecraft.exe that we download from Minecraft.net. And this mod folder is just there for me to download the mod files into. So you don't have to worry about that unless you want to be organized like I do. I'm a little anal retentive when it comes to that stuff. Now, what we have to do, we have to create a bat file, a .bat file. So we want to go to, or we want to right click on the empty space, go to new, text document. Okay. And then we'll select all of it because we want the N3 letters as well. We type in minecraft.bat. And yes, we want to change it. Now, that creates what's called a batch file. And it's very old school, hailing back to the DOS days. Basically, it's just a set of commands that Windows will run, or in the case of the old days, DOS will run in succession. So we right-click on this and we hit Edit. And it will automatically open it up in Notepad. And then from here we tell Windows that we want to change app data. So we type in set app data equals, and then we type in the path that we want to set app data to. So in my case, it's C colon backslash Minecraft and mods. I have no idea what that is, and I, right now I don't think I care. Oh, I have one too many slashes in there. Okay, then we hit File, Save. We do have to do one more thing. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something ever so slightly different. Now, I have this bat file that I set up before. This is the command you want to use to run Minecraft with... Uh, four gigs of RAM. So by default, Minecraft.exe will run with one gig of RAM. And a lot of times that's not enough. So if you have the spare memory, you can run this command and it will run with you know, extra RAM. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in here, But, because I have the Minecraft.exe file in the Minecraft and Mods folder, I have to change this path. Because this path is pointing to where I had the Minecraft.exe originally. So, I will take this out, change this to backslash Minecraft and Mods. Now, I would point out that this is not case sensitive. DOS. Well, this version of DOS is not case sensitive, so this will work fine. Now, if, if you don't have the extra RAM, just don't put in that part. Just need the Java AW dash jar and then Minecraft.exe. So we save that, close that close that because we don't need it anymore. And then if we hit the Minecraft.bat, we have the Minecraft launcher. Now, we gotta log in. And then it should, and it is, it's downloading all of the Minecraft files. So let's get out of here. So now we see we have the .minecraft folder. Now this is the .minecraft folder that was in the app data folder. It's the same basic thing, except this does not have 
anything special. It does not have your server list. It does not have your saved games. Nothing. This is a brand spanking new, clean install of Minecraft. And for our purposes, this is exactly what I want. I don't want my server lists. I don't want my save games. Nothing. I just want clean Minecraft. Now, from here on out, every time I try to run this Minecraft.bat file, it will run in this folder. But if I run this Minecraft.bat file, which I have pointed elsewhere, it will run my default vanilla Minecraft. Because that bat file is pointing to the downloads folder where I keep my Minecraft.exe. And it's not changing the app data. So yeah, that could be kind of confusing, I guess. Um, let me know if you get any kind if you're if you're confused if you need any any help i can help you out with this i know quite a bit about this kind of thing yeah if you have any questions just let me know i will post a link in the description to feed the beast even though you can see it right there it's feed the dash beast.com And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. In the next video, I will be covering installing... Ooh, let's go with Industrial Craft, because Industrial Craft is by far my favorite. I love the nuclear reactor, and what they did with it, from what I've read on the wiki, is going to be pretty awesome. So, I will see you in the next episode. And until then, keep playing the game. And have fun.